Well, bless him. I can't say enough about him. But let me just start off and tell you what we're talking about today. It's keeping the fire burning. Keeping the fire burning. You know, I've used a phrase, and some of you heard it. Uh, I use the phrase sometimes. My wife, she's so fired up. Hallelujah, especially when she goes before me. She, Oh, she's the fire in my life. Amen. But praise God that God uses her in that mind, manner. But it's not about somebody's kindling your fire. It's about you keeping the fire burning. You know, if you remember and you recall Moses, God lit the fire for him. He, he allowed him to see the fire, the burning bush. He allowed him to experience a great miracle sign and a wonder in his life. But Moses had to do what? He had to walk that thing out, didn't he? He had to keep the fire burning in his life. He took off his shoes so he could feel the warmth of the true fire of God. So that fire was in Moses, and Moses walked with that fire and did mighty miracles of God. So we must keep that same fire burning in us. We must never let it go out. Hallelujah. We must always remember God is with us, walking it out as he did with Moses. So we want to remember that. And so that's what I want to talk about today, keeping the fire burning in your life. Just to, just to recap some familiar scripture with you, I want you to go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, and we're going to go from 13 to 20. This is an interesting passage because it's very familiar, as I always say, and, and we've heard it many times, but I want to read it again so you can begin to rekindle your fire. When Jesus asked them, he says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, he asked his disciples, and you know, I've defined disciples for you many times, so you know that you are a disciple of Christ. So he asked the question of his disciples saying, who do men say that I am the son of man, am. You know, that's interesting to me when he was always referencing himself at times as the son of man. Have you ever thought about that? Here he is, the almighty God walking, glory to God, the word walking, as I like to say, and he's calling himself the son of man. How so, pastor, you would say, the son of man, because Jesus was so interested in terms of identifying with us. He was a man, hallelujah, with all of the tendencies and the nature of God, the glory of God in a man walking. So he referred to himself as the son of man, but yet he was God. In other words, he wanted to have a true, I say, relationship with us. When someone has a relationship with you, a true relationship, they must identify with you. They must get to know you, don't they? There is an intimacy and a relationship. When there's a true friendship, it goes beyond, hallelujah, what you can imagine because there's something in it that's an anointing. A friendship is an anointed place to have with someone. This is when no matter what happens, that friend is always going to be there. No matter your ups, your downs, you're mad, whatever, you sad, that friend is always going to be there. And that friend identifies with you. How so, Pastor? Because if you remember, Paul talked about this when he said, he says, he says, when I'm in Rome, I do as the Romans do, meaning he had to identify with the Romans in order to gain their souls in order to gain more friends, in order to gain more souls for Jesus. See, we identify with our friends so that then they would draw what? Closer to us. Jesus, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. So the son of man was very, he was very articulate or very skillful in his words, wasn't he? In terms of defining himself so that you would identify with him. The Bible talks about how God told Moses that you were not to worship false gods, you know, necromancers 
warlocks, those kinds of things, witches, which all that. You're not to worship none of those because he would give you a prophet that looks and talks like you. And he gave them Moses. In other words, he was able to speak to Moses, speak through Moses, and Moses was able to communicate to the people. Notice the relationship, the identification that was relayed to the people from God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And they said, he says, some say, Lord, that thou art John the Baptist. So they notice they could relate to John the Baptist. Notice the relationship building here. But, but, but Christ was very, very, very unique in how he defined himself. He, he didn't allow, hallelujah, no one else to know these things except those that, what, are close to him. God does not reveal his word to you unless you draw closer to him. You couldn't understand a lot about Jesus until you became saved. You had to get rid of the old man and put on the new man, hallelujah, in order to understand what Christ was speaking to you all along. So here they say, some say that you are John the Baptist trying to identify. And some say you are Elias. And others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Praise the Lord. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. I love that. Because Christ means something to me. Christ, he says, thou art the Christ. And the Christ is the son of the living God. Notice the son of the living, the true, oh, hallelujah, inalienable rights of a son. The son of the living God. The one and only God. The great I am. Hallelujah. The Jehovah. Hallelujah. The Elohim. Hallelujah. The great El Shaddai. The glory of the Lord rested upon his son. Now here he is, identified himself to us as the son of man, but then now it's revealed as to who he really is. Glory to God. He's walking, I say to you, in the flesh, but he's not of the flesh. He's always have been of the Holy Spirit. Notice how God loves telling us these things so that we can draw closer to him and understand him the more. God is so good, isn't he? But here he is saying, now he's been identified as the living God, the son of the living God. And Jesus told him at that point, he answered and said unto him, blessed are thy, Simon Barsona, Barsona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. Notice God had to reveal himself. Oh, glory to God. You cannot, oh, Jesus Christ, somebody get with me this morning. You cannot identify with God until he reveals himself to you. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to pray on that one. Because God is always there. But in order for you to receive, hallelujah, from God, he must identify himself to you. And how do I gain that trust where God can identify himself to me? You begin to pray, but not only pray, you submit, he says. Submit yourself, humble yourself unto the Lord, and then you can resist the devil. And the devil will flee to you, and Jesus can begin to reveal who he is to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That was for somebody. Praise the blessed name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He told him, he says, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father has done this. My father, when your father identifies you, that means he loves you. When your father identifies you to someone else, that means you have a greater love. Oh, greater is he that is in me that is in the world. But God identifies you to others through his Holy Spirit. That's why people know and respect you in your anointing. Because God does the work. He reveals it. He goes before you and let them know that you are the one that he called to do and to minister to them. Oh, praise the Lord. I know this is really good this morning, but blessed is his name because he reveals these things to us. This is when we know and can feel that there's a relationship between us and our father. And then he goes on further to say, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now I like that because when you buy a new home, oh glory to God, when you buy a new home, what's first given to you? 
the keys of somebody. And it's a glorious thing, isn't it? Because it is now, it belongs to you. You have the keys. You have rights to this home. You have a right to the place. Uh, hallelujah. God is already there. He's, he's met you at the door because you had the keys to unlock the door. Glory to God. God is unlocking someone's heart this morning and showing them something that they did not know. God is speaking to somebody that I know he is. I feel the anointing on you this morning because God is truly speaking this morning. He's giving you the keys, he says, to the kingdom of heaven. And he also, and he also said unto them, thou art, oh glory, watch this, hallelujah, now that he's given you the keys, glory to God. Jesus answered and said unto them, blessed, for flesh and blood could not reveal these things to you. And I say also to you that thou, hallelujah, are the rock, the rock. That's so important, isn't it? Because now he's making you the rock. See, your house should always be built on a rock. We know that story, don't we? And he says, I will build my house, he says, upon a rock. And I will build my church on the same thing. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Glory to God. Saints of God. He didn't say the gates of hell wasn't going to come. Oh, somebody. He didn't say trouble's not going to come. Hallelujah. Triumphs are not going. To, he didn't say that. He said that they would not prevail against you. The gates are all kinds of gates. We have many gates. We have the eye gate, the ear gate, all oh, somebody, the heart gate. That's why you must put on the whole armor of the Lord. You must guard your heart. Glory to God. And guard your head. You must guard these things because these are gates that the enemy can use to get in. So this is what he was saying. He said the gates of hell then will not prevail against you because now you know who Christ is. He started out just wanting to be your friend. And he says, I'm the son of man. But then it was revealed truly who he was, walking with you, talking with you, letting you know. Isn't that the way it started? If you recall, when you went to church, you, you didn't know anybody. When you first, you, it was kind of timidly approaching. But then as you got to know and heard the word of God from the man or woman of God, then you are you you begin to know that God was being revealed to you. Oh, somebody, this is so wonderful. God knows where you're at right now. That's why he's saying keeping the fire burning in your life. You need to know that he's more than just a friend to you. He's the living God. Then he he then he says he will charge you. And he says, don't tell. He told the disciples, don't tell anybody just yet. Hallelujah because they're not ready to receive it. Glory to God. See, sometimes when you are ministering to individuals and you're just ministering, you, you're just encouraging them. You, you're not preaching to them or, or condemning or, or judging them. You're just ministering the word of God. You're, you're ministering encouraging words. You're not, you're, oh, hallelujah, you're not talking fire and brimstone. You're just talking to them about the goodness of Christ. Hallelujah. And there's many ways you can minister to people who are in need without how preaching to them. You know this. Some of you understand this. It's just being kind. Again, an encouraging word that can help someone. This is how Jesus approached us. He became very kind and approached people. That's how he was. So therefore, saints of God, I say to you, after reading this scripture, how this works. He says, I will give you the kingdoms of heaven and whatsoever thy shall, uh-oh, whatsoever, because you have the keys, whatsoever thy shall bind on earth, thy shall loose in heaven. Think about that for a minute. You've heard me preach about this binding and loosening. We don't do enough of it because we allow the enemy to, to, to oh, somebody, you allow the enemy to come in your house. You're allowing the enemy to invade your privacy, oh, saints of God, when you can easily bind him and, and, and cast him out. And then you, you can loose the ministering angels and the angels of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, oh, glory to God, the heavenly host, my oh, somebody, the fruit of the Spirit. You can loose all of these wonderful things that you have at your disposal in your house right now. So I need to do it right now. 
Glory to God, because you made a mistake. You made a mistake. And you allowed the enemy in. That's okay. You're going to get him out right now. Remember, the gates of hell cannot prevail. So we decree and declare that enemy that has entered in your house illegally. Glory to God. I'm not just talking about a physical house, though some people may may have that situation, and you need to make a you need to make a decision in the name of Jesus to get that devil out of your house. But I'm talking now about your spiritual home, your body, your heavenly body that God has given us. Get them evil thoughts out of your out of your house. Mm. Get that stuff that you know that is what we call what? Stinking thinking out of your house, out of your members. Get it out right now. Curse it. Cast it down. Cast it down to the bottomless pit of hell. And loose, again, I say, the fruit of the Spirit. Let that come in your most holy temple where God can come in then and sit down and be your friend. Oh, this is so powerful. But you understand now that you must seek God, your true friend. Oh, the true Savior, your first love your true friend. Therefore, by seeking God at his house, the church, he would then give you the keys to your house. Oh, glory to God. Praise the Lord. I want to say hallelujah on that. Somebody Shabbat the Lord for me and say amen. Saints, listen to me. Hallelujah. Therefore, by seeking God at his house, the church. He then will give you the keys of your house. And again, I use the analogy of a new home. And you've received the keys. You open the door. The house, in most cases, is empty. But notice something, it's going to share. It's clean because they had to go in and make the preparations and put in the right materials, do the painting, and make sure that it was clean when you entered the home. So whatever state your home was, you received, it's a new home. It's one that God has decreed and given to you, isn't it? So basically, it's a new home. So this same physical home, you have the keys, and it's empty. Notice, the Bible says, when you're going to share your house, and it is made clean and it's empty, then the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, can come in. So the first thing that moves into your house, the first thing that you move into the house, glory to God, because you have the keys, the first thing you enter into your house, you know where I'm going, is Jesus. You make Jesus the cornerstone of your house. You make him a place in your home, glory to God. You let him establish all his rights or in your home. You let him be your friend in your home. And then, oh, glory to God, when the enemy tries to come against your gates, oh, it will not prevail. Glory to God. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. That's how you should always anoint your new home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the physical aspect, but it also relates to the spiritual aspect of your home because your home is the, is the temple you dwell in right now. Your spirit man dwells in your fleshly home, your body. Glory to God. So therefore, I say again, by seeking God is at his house. Oh, we know his house is the rock. It's the church. He told Peter, he says, you are the church and I will build my gates around your church. And the, and, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Listen to me, saints. So when you do this by seeking God at his house, the rock, then, then God will give you the keys of your house. he give you what keys, Pastor? What are those keys? Well, they open the door, but then those keys are knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You use these keys, glory to God, to possess your own gates. This is how you protect your house. By using the keys of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. What do you get that, Pastor? Well, it's in the word of God. It's in our friend, our elder brother, Jesus, who gives us these things. God says he gives you wisdom liberally. He says by, when you begin to get wisdom by all you're getting, then you get understanding. 
the knowledge comes along with that. So these are wonderful keys of the spirit of the living God. These were revealed to us by Jesus when he came and he gave them to us. Hallelujah. So that we can use them to keep our house clean. That's why godliness is cleanliness. Hallelujah. When your house is gonna share it, when it's clean, then Jesus will definitely move in. Hallelujah. I love it when Jesus moves in, saints of God, because I can always meet him, meet him in the prayer closet, meet him at the altar, talk to him, tell him what I need, tell him where I'm at, so I can then apply, as I mentioned last week, the word of God. I can use his word, his work, and his word to labor for me. Hallelujah. He allows me to use his word and to manage it so that he can do the work for me. And I can sit back and watch him work. Oh, Jesus is so good. How, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm getting something out of this. Maybe I'm preaching to myself this morning, but God is speaking to somebody. So saints, I tell you the truth. Remember, you are the rock. You are the rock. You have the power to bind and or loose. So bind the enemy. Bind the enemy. Hallelujah. Whether you're still, oh, somebody said, well, Pastor, my home is not that new. Wait a minute. Your home is new if you decree it be new. Glory to God. You have the power and the authority. That's what he just said. You have the power and the authority to, to create and to cleanse your home and to make it new. Remember, Christ says that you, you yourself, is a new creature. So why wouldn't your home be a new? Oh, glory to God. That is so good. I get chills. Glory to God because he's speaking to somebody's heart, directly to your heart. Hallelujah. You need to know that God is real in your life and he's trying to keep you to light your flame. What did the song say? Don't put your, 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 your lamp cannot go under a basket. Glory to God. Your lamp must shine. Your lamp must be bright in your home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your spiritual body, your lamp must be bright. Hallelujah. With the word of God. Saints, I tell you, I'm getting excited about this. Again, I say to you, Jesus asked the question. He says, but whom do you say? He say that I am. No, when you ask yourself that same question, you need to ask yourself that same question. Because some of you have been doubting. And you know how I feel about doubt and unbelief. I curse it in the mighty name of and cast it down to the bottom of the spit of hell in the name of Jesus. I curse worry and being anxious for nothing. I curse it, bind it, cast it down in the bottomless pit of hell. Amen. Strife, envy, I curse it, bind it, cast it down to the bottomless pit of hell. Confusion, discord, I curse it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Cast it down to the bottomless pit of hell. Just got rid of all of those ites in your life. Oh, glory to God. Just got rid of them for you. Now bind them with me in the name of Jesus. Curse from and cast them down. And lose, what are we going to lose? The fruit of the Spirit. Glory to God. They're going to come in now. Oh, love, peace, joy, hope, oh, faith, faith, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what's going to live in our house, this brand new house of yours. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So if your temple has somehow made a mistake and gotten a little corrupted. No worries. Repent today. I repent and say, I repent, Pastor, and now I'm, I'm going to have a clean house. I'm going to make preparations where Jesus can come in because I'm garnishing my house. No more of the stinking thinking in my life. I'm going to move forward now because God is with me. I'm, I'm, I'm rekindling my flame. I'm, I'm, I'm looking now at the burning bush, and I'm hearing the instructions of the Lord. And I'm going forth, hallelujah. I'm going forth in Jesus. I'm not looking to the left nor to the right. I'm going forth in Jesus because God has rekindled my flame. Mm. I'm going to walk this thing completely out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then you are the rock. You have the power and the authority now to bind and to lose, as I mentioned many times. But then I ask, who do you say you are? When you're asking yourself that question, who do you say that you are? Are you not join heirs? Oh, glory. This is good. Watch this. This is the power. And this is how you receive it. You are join heirs with Christ Jesus. Then you are to build your house, your foundation, 
upon a rock, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. There it is right there. I could close the book today, and, 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 and that would be it. Therefore, again, I say to you, by seeking God at his house, the church, then, then he will give you the keys, the keys of heaven, which contains the knowledge, wisdom, and understand to you to possess your gates. Remember, again, I say, you are the rock. You have the power to bind and to loose. Hallelujah. So if you now are keeping the fire burning, you have an understanding as to how to go about that. But here, you need to fan. Somebody need to wave a hand. You need to fan the flame. You need to fan the flame. Oh, wave your hand, somebody. Fan the flame. Oh, somebody, you ever, oh, you ever been camping? Anybody ever been camping? I have. Anybody ever just been out in the woods and had to build a fire, a campfire? Have you, have you ever had to experience that? Oh, hallelujah. I grew up and, 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 and we had what we called an old wooden stove. Hmm. Hallelujah. And we had to kindle that flame. And that, that, that stove set outside so that when we came in from whatever we were doing, we could, we could kindle the flame and, and, and warm our hands. Notice the waving of the hands when you're kindling the flame. Flaming or fanning the, the, the flame. You, you're, you're, and then when that flame is, you go out, you get kindled. So, you know, I did camping at times. And so we, we go gather small sticks. You know what I'm talking about. And we put them. And then we'd spark it. We'd have a little sparker that would spark those kindles. And then that flame would begin to, 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 to kick up a little bit and we would fan it. But then as I think about the fanning the flames, how it would, would, would create a fire. And the fire would get bigger. It would grow bigger. And then we could put other large pieces of wood upon it. Fanning the flames. And I, I explain that because I want you to get this with me. I want you to always wave your hands to God because what you're doing, you're fanning the flames of God. The, 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 oh, somebody, the never ending fire. The burning bush had all, oh, was always constantly burning. Hallelujah. Moses didn't understand it. It wasn't for him to understand, but it was for him to learn or to and apply what God was putting in him. He, oh, somebody, you want your flame to always be burning. To, to, you want to fan it, praise the Lord, so his flame will always be burning in your life. Oh, somebody, this is so good. First Timothy, I should say Second Timothy talks about it like this. Hallelujah. Second Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 6. He takes off and he says, appeal for loyalty to the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gifts of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. Notice, it does not make us timid because when we come to God, we're supposed to come to him boldly to the throne room. That is the word. He says, for the spirit of God that he gave us does not make us timid, but gives us what? Power, love, and self-confidence. For the Lord is our confidence. Glory to God. So then you should bind up insecurity. Oh, glory to God. Intimidation. You should need to be binding these up. Lack of confidence. You need to be binding those up because he just says, if you're fanning the flame, let me read it again because somebody didn't get it. This is 2 Timothy 1 and 6. Come on. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 6. You need to read it. Write it down so you can get it. It says, appeal for loyalty to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame. The gifts of God. The gifts of God, he says, which is in you through the laying in the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid boldly. Hallelujah. That's something my wife doesn't have. She's not a timid person. Sometimes I, I, I wish she had a little timid. <laughs> but she is a bold 
individual. Hallelujah. But that, that's because of the Christ, the Jesus in her. Glory to God. And I'm praying that same anointing on you, that you become bold in Christ. Hallelujah. Because Christ is the son of the living God. So then I say to you, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but give us power, love, and self-confidence. That is so good. That is a scripture you need to write down, and you need to begin to read that even before you go to bed at night so that you can wake up feeling refreshed that God is moving in your life. Remember this, I say to you, Psalms 23, very, very familiar. You should, I know you know this when you learned it as a child and coming up, it still is very applicable. Psalm 22 says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's why the song says, I shall not fear. He says, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. <clears throat> Let me tell you something, saints, if you're not ready to go, then I'm, I, I feel for you because every day you should be ready. Because you never know the hour. Glory to God. But when you, he says, if you love your life, you lose it. But if you give it to Christ, you keep it. Hallelujah. For God I live, for God I die. Let go what, what we say about let, let, let God do it. Hallelujah. So he says in Psalms 23, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. I will not fear evil. I shall not fear for thou art with me. That's why I shall not fear, because God is with me. Why should I fear anything when this awesome God, who is the creator of all things, everything, nothing could be nothing without him, and nothing was created without him. Hallelujah. Nothing will be created without him. The God of our past, old, present, and our future. The God of our fathers. The great I am. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. So then why should I fear the shadow of death? Why should I fear anything, Ashley? For thou art with me. For thy rod, Moses, Moses, Moses had the rod and the staff. And they did what? They comforted him. Just as that same rod. Notice if you, you read in the book of Deuteronomy and you find out that rod, hallelujah, was not found because it had too much power in it. That rod got kept. It was brought back. No one's never found the rod and the staff of God. And they were one and the same. Because Moses used it as a rod and a staff to carry, to hold him up, to use, to, to create many miracles, signs, and wonders through God's word. So then that rod was a spiritual thing for Moses, the power in which Moses ruled, that God gave him dominion over. The same power, the same rod and staff, the spiritual rod and staff is at your disposal today. You have this because God is revealing it to you. So then I say again, Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now when you read that scripture, it ought to have more meaning to you. For thou art with me, God's with me. And not only is he with me, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. This is what Moses had. Notice he had the rod and the staff, but who was with him? Who parted the Red Sea? Come on, somebody. Who destroyed Pharaoh? Who did all? God. The rod was just to comfort Moses. That's all. It was just a comfort. Just showing. It was like Jesus being your friend. The comforter. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Because the comforter comes when you need him. The comforter. That's what the rod and the staff represent. The comforter. But God does the work. Glory to God. Saints of God. Hear me today. I pray thee. Genesis 4, 2, and 7. But if ye do, if ye do not do what is right. Hallelujah. Hear me, saints. Genesis 4, 2, and 7. But if ye do not do what is right, hear me, sin is crouching at your door. Notice, you have this new home that you, you just created in Christ Jesus. But sin, oh, somebody, hallelujah, the gates of hell, the sin is crouching at your door. The word tells us, God tells us that sin is always at your door, trying to get in. 
You know my phrase, always trying to get in. He's always, you know, if you let the devil ride, he will want to drive. So don't let him drive you anywhere. Don't even let him in. He's crouching at the door. So rebuke him in the name of Jesus. He says, if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. All he need is a crack. It's desire. It's desire. It's desire is to have you. This is why Jesus prayed for Peter. He says, listen, son, even though Peter, you, you're anointed. He says, the devil would shift you, but I prayed for you. The devil would have you. He would shift you, but I prayed for you. This is why he knew Peter was going to fall. He fell, and he said three times he denied Christ, but Christ came again, had Peter to repent. Just as he denied Christ three times, Christ came back and told him, do you love me, son? And he had to say that he loved him three times. In other words, he had to repudiate what he had done, their sin. He got it right, just like we have the opportunity today to get it right. We know now that sin is crouching at your door. All he needs is a crack to get in, but you're not going to let him. Why? Because you have rule over him. You have rule over him. You must, I say, you must rule over him. You have the authority. Bind him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, every more, every day I get up, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like I, 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 the devil is sitting there with his arms folded. He says, I know you're going to bind me, so go ahead. Hallelujah. And I bind him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I bind him in the name of Jesus and cast him down to the bottomless pit of hell. Every time I have a, a, a thought that's not of God, I, I bind it in the name of Jesus and loose the fruit of the Spirit. You hear? That's why I pray the prayer. No matter how I'm feeling about whatever, it's, I pray the prayer. What is the prayer that I pray? Some of you know it by heart now. Love thy neighbor. Oh, glory to God. Love thy enemy. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray that prayer for that reason, because the enemy is crouching at my door, and I know I can bind him and curse him and cast him back down to the bottom of the spirit of hell. Oh, saints of God, hear me, I say to you, sin, sin then, let me tell you what it is. It's an immoral act. It's an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the design or divine power of God. That's what it is. That's what sin is. It's an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the divine law of God. Peter wraps it up like this. He says, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and do and to preserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. So he knows how to deliver us out of temptation. You ever been in a situation and you knew you wasn't supposed to be doing that. And then you cried out to God. You said, God, if it's not for me, remove it. If you pray that prayer, saints, God will come in and, and, and take away any situation that is not for you. And you don't have the strength to resist it. Let him come in. That's why you should submit yourself unto the Lord and resist the devil. And the enemy then will flee. But you've got to let God in. The Lord knows how to deliver you, the godly, out of temptation and to preserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So he will deliver you if you give it to him. So if you have thoughts of things that you feel like you can't resist doing, let God in. That just helps somebody. It just broke a yoke. Hallelujah. Finally, saints, remember this. Genesis 5 talks about Lamech. Lamech was a powerful man of God. He lived 180 years and two years, and he begot a son named Noah. And he called his name Noah, saying, this one will, will sh he shall comfort us. This one, he says, this name, Noah, he says, will comfort us. Notice the comfort. Concerning our work and the toils of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord cursed because of Canaan. Saints, I leave you with this. God knows your destiny. 
but your path, your path, somebody say my path. This is why we should give, let God direct our path. But notice this, God knows your destiny. He knows you may go astray or whatever, but your path, you have the power to change. No matter, you want to change your path to good, but then if you, this is how you do that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Commit all thy ways unto him, and he shall direct your path. O saints of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give the Lord praise, and I thank you for your anointed ear listening today. Oh, 